Hello, we've got a 2017 Land Rover Discovery Sport and it's got a warning light on the dash that says incorrect quality exhaust fluid detected. Did it say consult dealer? No. No, it's a warning light on the dash. I'll show you a picture of the light before we uh, blank it. Yeah, this is what happens. Can you see the error message down there? Oh, it disappeared. There we go. So we've never seen this before, but we know it's a problem. And just one final thing, if you want a reliable Land Rover, buy a Toyota. Don't get one of these. Right, so where's the DEF tank? DEF tank is up here. The received wisdom, or the general wisdom, is to drain out the existing DEF. As you know, the DEF, or and blue as it's called, has only got a finite life and it does deteriorate and the rate at which it deteriorates will be proportional to the amount of air and moisture uh, that's above the fluid in the tank. It's only got like a year shelf life. So when it gets empty, maybe when it's near empty, which one, this one is, it's not empty, but it's near empty, the quality of the fluid could deteriorate and that could be one cause, okay? Now they, we'll take this off and show you how to get rid of this and how to drain the tank. And the, the other wisdom is to drain the tank and then flush the tank with a bit of deionized water and then refill with new fluid okay now that may or may not reset the actual warning on the dash we're unsure about that there's conflicting stories on the internet we've done a bit of research so we'll dip, handle this in a moment and then looking up here in that orifice there's the main exhaust there's the engine up in that bay up there and here is the uh, driver it's my man with the torch is swooping in to help there is the connection for the actual solenoid on the injector and this is the DEF or AdBlue injector held by a T25 or T30 torque screw in position and the other advice is to undo that screw, withdraw the injector and just inspect the end of the injector to see if there's any crystal, crystallisation or contamination on it. So when we get it off we'll have a closer look at the actual nozzle. Okay, So we're going to go through the draining procedure I've got to launch a code reader, quite a good one, but it's not the top of the range one, and we'll go through resetting that. But first of all, we'll make sure it needs to be reset with a code reader. It won't just go away on its own, because nobody seems sure what's going to happen once we've done this remedial action. It may not solve the problem, but it seems to be the consensus is that you've got a pretty, pretty good chance, if you get a warning coming up, that incorrect quality uh, exhaust fluid detected that this might solve it. So we'll keep you, if it doesn't solve it, we'll let you know. And if it does solve it, we'll let you know and take you for a desk drive. Thanks. Back in a moment. Correction, we're taking the bolts out. They're quite rusty actually around this cover. And I think we need to take all these off as well. Um, and some of them are 10 mil and some are eight mil and they're very rusty. So yeah, I'd, uh, if you have a chance, make them soak down with some easing fluid, some penetrating fluid. There we are up under there, you can't <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so this is the view of the uh, the bottom of the unit with the that cover removed, which we pointed to. There's the exhaust fluid or add blue tank holds about seven liters. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. the filling pipe for it. How long does it take to fill that stuff? Then does it take ages to go yeah. down the hole. No, quite low viscosity. And, uh, um, sorry, that's not the filling pipe, that's the drain pipe. So there's a drain pipe connection there, and it's a bit confusing, but the actual, there's the pipe, the, the, uh, the drain point, but if you follow the pipe up to here, round the side. I'm getting rained on. Round this side here is the pipe, and you pull it down. Yeah, there's a stopper in the end of this dangly pipe to drain out the rest of the supposedly inferior deteriorated DEF fluid. So we're just going to drain that out and um, we'll see at the next stage. Yeah, so basically you've got this uh, little clip here. It's not a screw-on cap, but the cap just goes round and round and round on an O-ring. And uh, you push this in, like on the fuel line, you push that grey part in and the pull. Can you hold the pipe? I don't want it flying over here. And out comes the old fluid. Okay, we're going to drain that. We'll see when it's empty. Yeah, before you actually drain it, you're going to get an airlock. So you have to take the cap off the uh, filler point in the, under the bonnet to let the uh, air in, to let the fluid out. Otherwise, it just 
runs for a little while and then starts bubbling, uh, you know, gulping. So the lid's coming off now, then we'll finish the drain. There you go, so we've got it loosened off. We just need to open up the clip to get over that, to allow it to pass over the rim. That's open. As well, you take the screw right out, take the bolt right out and just open it up slightly. Okay, spring it open. Push it off. And push the top half off. You see it's still gripping there. You need to get put the screwdriver in where this bolt was near there and just lever it up, that's it. That's it, that's it, and then the injector comes out. So we have released the injector. Now let's have a look in the injector. Now that looks pretty clear to me. Can you just hold it while I zoom in on it? You can point it to me, or oh, I'll come around there. So there's the injection nozzle. It's looking pretty clean, actually. Mm. It's looking pretty clean. Yeah, switching into the in injection port on the exhaust, that's what it looks like. You can see that grey material that's almost blocking the whole hole. The whole hole is just build up of crystallised muck and diesel, so that needs to be cleaned out. And that could well be the cause of our problem, so we're just going to go and switching to clean it out now. There you go, so that's knocked off the outside, that's just all crystallised sludge. Now we've got to get something to poke in the hole to try and hook all the rest of the stuff that's blocking the actual hole itself. We might have another look with the endoscope to see if it's clear first. Yeah, so that's what it looked like after the, not that initial lump of stuff off the outside, that cone of uh, material. So a little bit more cleaning is required. Yeah, we're just generally looking at the design of this thing and you can see that there's all this rust stain on the side of the tank up here can you see that i'll just go back to normal size it's a big rust stain down here and all of this under here is all filled up with road dirt look underneath the pump so this cover in a few years is going to be rusted through i mean it's one of those things where you'll be searching around for a new cover because it's all disintegrated and if we look down in the cover down here You can see there's plenty of serious rust going on around that area on the left hand side there is a picture. So yeah, not a great car. And um, I was just looking at the general rust on some of the components under here and I was just saying to the owner that we should just go around and spray all the nuts and bolts and the fastenings. Things like this with some uh, anti-rust stroke penetrating fluid just to stop them rusting a bit. And when I said earlier that take this cover off, it wasn't the right cover, so ignore that. This one's cracked, look, just there. But it wasn't that, it was these 8mm bolts that go around the plastic cover that fits over this side of the tank, which is, uh, sorry, metal cover that covers the plastic tank. So it's this cover, there's the wheel, the back wheel, so it's immediately in front of the back wheel suspension parts. All right. Now, as soon as we found the... Uh, the port are all crusted up. I think that would uh, affect the spray pattern coming out of the nozzle, so we're hopeful this will solve the problem. Okay, let's have a go. I'm reaching up round inside the inspection, round the ins around the back of the suspension, and I can get that to just locate using those lugs onto there like that. Okay, I think. There are, those lugs locate in cutouts, so it's rotationally, you've got to clock it quite right to get it on by the looks of it. I'm not sure I can manage this, but I'll try. Should move my fingers, because they're on the wrong side of the hose. There we are. Can you move the camera around to the, to the right, this way? Slightly. I can't see if you can. There it is. Okay, so we've got a nice parallel fit. You see that you can zoom in a bit. I'll zoom it on the. On the uh, you can tap it to make sure it focuses in the right place. 
and then the clip goes on with the screw at the top from the back so can I get this on I drop it on over the top hold it in position rotate it around squeeze it up if I can and the name of the game is to get that little lip there to engage over the top of there which I don't think I can do with my fingers so I'm gonna need a pair of long nose pliers for this or a pair of pliers I think so okay right, let's stop this yeah I'm gonna cut it all up later okay. right so let's see if we can get this to go back over and take a little bit of fiddling I'm holding it all the while with my hand round with the reach around the back most of your chaps would be quite good at that, I imagine. Yeah, I fiddled around with this for quite some time and couldn't get it to go. <coughs> that clip to clip over the top. So we managed to do it, and I forgot to put the uh, to put press the record on the camera. But the thing that made it easy was just spraying some WD-40 around that flange where that clamp goes on, and the little bit of lubrication where it grips onto the flanges that's holding the. Uh, inject the nozzle onto the exhaust it just literally slipped and popped over the top and once that uh, clip is clipped on and it's kind of partially engaged you can put the screw back in and just tighten it up and clamp it off so I did do it but I didn't film it so yeah a bit of lubrication around there just a quick squirt did the job so try that if you're having problems yeah so after we've got the clip back on I'll leave it running so that give you a bit of entertainment while I talk um, we took the car out for a run, hoping that the uh, quality, uh, the DEF quality message would disappear on its own. So we drove for about 12 miles, ran the car, and the warning light was still on. The warning message still coming on, poor quality DEF fluid detected. So, um, yeah, just a video here of us driving around and the fact that the light hadn't extinguished after we had done the necessary miles we thought it would sort itself out but apparently you can try just letting it tick over it might be that you can just let this tick over after you've uh, done the clean and everything else and it might try again and it might reset itself we don't think it will it's not characteristic of Range Rover but have a go anyway I'm going to cut to the actually using the analyzer to try and sort this problem code reader and um, we found this under the catalyst quality something reduction program it's an obscure heading in here i'll tell you what it is in a minute when i can find it again and it's asking us we've been for an eight mile trash drive and it's still illuminated so we're going to reset the actual monitor okay which is this you can see that and i didn't find this straight away so if you have got an analyzer and you're unsure you can just go back and and ask chat gpt whether your particular code reader or ODB reader code reader has got the ability to exhaust the fluid exhaust fluid reset. Yeah, so just go in and ask one of the AIs, either uh, Grok or ChatGPT, whether your reader will support it because it seems to be quite good on that. When I've asked the uh, AI what my reader supports, it's often easier to find it than actually looking through all the menus. So bear that in mind. But we, it had, didn't reset itself, so we're going to reset it now. Ignition on. Ignition on. Yep. Turn the ignition switch to off position. Can you do that? Yeah, we did the reset successfully. If you actually follow the instructions on the stream, it works a lot better. And it did complete, but after we'd done the reset, um, the system reset of the DEF system, it told us that car restart would be disabled in 500 miles, the usual error you get when you run out of fluid. Um, so we took it for a drive, but it didn't fix the problem. But then we found out how actually to do it. So we're in the car. Um, we had a bit of a heart attack when the, uh, the light didn't go off. And we've been driving around trying to reset it. Now, we've, um, that test when we were going to see whether the light extinguished on its own, unfortunately, I lost patience. And maybe I should have done a bit more research, but we were on a tight deadline because we need the car. And um, we did reset it, but the... It went away from the message being that um, poor quality DEF fluid, the original error, and then it said uh, car, what was it saying? Dosing malfunction. Hmm? Dosing malfunction. The dosing malfunction. Hmm. And the 500 mile to... 500 mile um, 
no restart. A 500 mile no restart error. This persisted for a while, and then I noticed uh, something on a, on a post that said, after you've done this flush and clean of your nozzles and everything else, you should start the engine, get it to running temperature, and then leave it ticking over for 20 minutes. Mm. Then the system does a diagnostic, and then if it's happy, it may re well reset the, uh, the function. So at the moment, it's working. And so we concluded that... Uh, we should have tried the 20-minute uh, tick-over thing when the engine's warm just to see if it's reset it before we started playing around with the code reader. So if you don't have a code reader but you have the error, we think at the moment, because it's running and reporting, there's no errors, that um, it was that blockage around the injection port, although it may have been the poor quality fluid because the tank had four litres in it, three litres? Yeah, about four litres. About three litres, and we noticed on the actual fluid itself that... Even the new pot of fluid that we put in, expiry date was uh, the end of this year, 2025. Mm. Correct? Yeah. So, yeah, the one we, the stuff we put in there, we've got um, 6,000 miles to use it up. Otherwise, technically, it might be out of date. So we don't know whether that draining and refilling was significant in what we did. But we've given the information. We fixed it. Um, sometimes you have to try more than one thing to uh, make things work. But, yeah, it's working. So we're happy about that. And good luck if you're doing your own. Just um, hit the little titty button in the corner, subscribe if you can, and also um, leave me a like if you like a like, if this has been useful. But if not, well, yeah, you can uh, have a good old laugh at our antics. So thanks for watching.